Hello again, everyone, and welcome to this lesson on the Pythagorean theorem. So let's start off with a few key questions. What is the Pythagorean theorem? What are the properties of right triangles? And how can you use the Pythagorean theorem to solve problems? So let's go ahead and explore those questions and then take a look at a bunch of practice problems. Okay, so let's touch on a little bit of math history here. The Pythagorean theorem is named after an ancient Greek philosopher and mathematician named Pythagoras. And Pythagoras discovered that in any right triangle where the two shorter sides, also known as legs, with lengths A and B, and the third longest side, the side that is directly opposite the right angle in the right triangle, and this longest side is known as the hypotenuse of the right triangle and has a length of C, that the following relationship is always true. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. So the sum of the squares of the two smaller sides is always equal to the square of the longest side. And this equation is known as the Pythagorean theorem. And just make an important note that this equation only applies to right triangles. So now let's go ahead and quickly explore the properties of right triangles a little bit further, and then we'll learn how to use the Pythagorean theorem to solve problems. So before we move on to any practice problems, let's make sure that we really understand the properties of right triangles. So for starters, a right triangle is a triangle that has one right angle, and a right angle is equal to 90 degrees. And you'll see in these three triangles how it makes that L shape, and that little box represents the right angle. Next, let's talk about the longest side of a right triangle. This side of the triangle is called the hypotenuse, and it is always located directly opposite the right angle. And in this lesson, we are going to represent the length of that longest side of the right triangle, the hypotenuse, with the letter C. Now that you understand how to identify the longest side of a right triangle, the hypotenuse, let's talk about the two shorter sides of a right triangle. These are called the legs of the right triangle, and we represent their lengths with the letters A and B. Now, one final note on the legs of a right triangle. The hypotenuse C will always be directly opposite the right angle, but A and B are interchangeable, so it doesn't actually matter which one you label A and which one you label B as long as you only are labeling the legs of the right triangle and not the hypotenuse. And this is very important because doing this correctly will allow you to use the Pythagorean theorem to solve examples. And now we're ready to go ahead and take a look at a few of those examples. Okay, so now that you understand the properties of right triangles and what A, B, and C represent, you can now start using the Pythagorean theorem. And again, the Pythagorean theorem states that for any right triangle, A squared plus B squared equals C squared where A and B represent the lengths of the legs of the right triangle, and C represents the length of the hypotenuse, the longest side that is directly opposite the right angle. So for this example, let's go ahead and label A, B, and C. So we know again that C is the hypotenuse, the longest side. So in this example, C is equal to five, again, since that side is directly opposite the right angle. Next, we can take a look at the legs to find the values of A and B. Again, these are the two shorter sides of the right triangle. And in this example, we have A equals three and B equals four. And again, you could have done that the opposite where B equals three and A equals four. It doesn't matter as long as you correctly identify C. So now that we have values for A, B, and C, we can plug them into the Pythagorean theorem. And if it works out, then we can conclude that this triangle is indeed a right triangle. 
So let's go ahead and see if it does work out. So instead of a squared plus b squared equals c squared, we have 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. And we want to see if that's true. So let's go ahead and work this out. 3 squared we know is equal to 9. Plus 4 squared, which we know is equal to 16. And now on the other side of the equal sign, we have 5 squared, which we know is equal to 25. So now let's go back to the left side, 9 plus 16, we know is equal to 25. And of course, it is true that 25 equals 25. So because this worked out, and we just showed that a squared plus b squared does equal c squared, we can conclude that this triangle is indeed a right triangle. So this example really showed you how the Pythagorean theorem works. And now that you have a better understanding of how it works, and now that you have a little bit of experience, let's go ahead and look at some problems where we use the Pythagorean theorem to find a missing side of a right triangle. Okay, so here is our first practice problem where we have to find the missing length of a right triangle. And again, since this problem involves the lengths of a right triangle, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to solve it. So just like the last example, let's start off by identifying which side is the hypotenuse. And again, we just label that C, and that is the side directly opposite the right angle. And in this example, we don't know the value of C. It's denoted with a question mark. So we're just going to leave C as is, as the letter C. That's what we have to solve for. We want to find the value of C. Next, we can label A and B the legs of the right triangle. In this case, we'll call A5 and B12. And then we can go ahead and substitute 5 for A and 12 for B. And now we're ready to use the Pythagorean theorem. So again, instead of A squared plus B squared equals C squared, we have 5 squared plus 12 squared equals C squared. And again, the reason why C is a letter and not a number is because that is the side length that we don't know. And that is what we're trying to figure out, what number C actually represents. And now let's just go ahead and work this out. So 5 squared, we know, is equal to 25. Plus 12 squared, we know, is equal to 144. And that sum is equal to C squared. We're just going to bring that down. Now, back to the left side, 25 plus 144 equals 169. So now we have 169 is equal to C squared. So we are very close to finding the value of C, but we just want C by itself. We don't want the exponent attached to it. So we have to perform inverse operations. Now, the inverse or opposite of squaring a number is to take the square root of that number. So in order to get c by itself, we have to take the square root of both sides of the equal sign, both sides of the equation. So when we take the square root of c squared, we are left with just c. And again, the whole reason why we took the square root of both sides is to get c by itself. Now over on the left side, the square root of 169 is equal to 13. And we can conclude that the value of C is 13. So we just figured out, using the Pythagorean theorem, the length of the missing side, in this case, the hypotenuse of the right triangle. So if you're still feeling a little bit confused, you might want to go back and work through that problem again. But if not, let's go ahead and move on to a second practice problem. Okay, so now let's take on practice problem number two. It's pretty similar to the last example. We have to find the missing length of a right triangle. Two of the side lengths are given, and one of them is denoted with a question mark. That's the side that we have to figure out the value of. And again, we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem to do that. So just like the last example, let's start off by identifying which side is the hypotenuse and label that with C. So again, just go straight across opposite from the right angle, and we'll label that side length C. In this case, C is equal to 10. Next, we can label the shorter sides of the right triangle the legs. 
with a and b. So in this example, we can say that a is 8 and b is our unknown value. That's our question mark, the value that we have to figure out. So we're just going to leave that as the letter b. Now that we know a, b, and c, we can plug those values into the Pythagorean theorem and solve. So in this case, we have 8 squared plus b squared equals 10 squared. And again, b is a letter, not a number in this case, because we don't know the value of b. That's the value that we have to find. So now let's go ahead and work this out. Starting with 8 squared, which we know is equal to 64, plus b squared. We don't know what b squared is, so we're just going to bring it down to the next step of our equation. And we know that that sum is equal to 10 squared, which we know equals 100. Now, we need to get b squared by itself. And to do that, we have to get rid of that 64. And that can be accomplished by performing inverse operations. The opposite of a positive 64 is a negative 64. So we can subtract 64 from both sides. So on the left side, 64 minus 64 is just equal to 0. So those go away. And on the right side of the equation, 100 minus 64 is equal to 36. So now we are left with b squared equals 36. And now, just like the last example, we are very close to finding the value of b, but we just want b by itself. So we have to get rid of that exponent. And to do that, we do inverse operations by taking the square root of both sides of the equation. Because again, the inverse of squaring a number is to take the square root of that number. So the square root of b squared is just equal to b. And the square root of 36, we know, is equal to 6. So we can conclude that the value of b is 6. So the length of the missing side in this example is 6. So again, we just used the Pythagorean theorem when we were given two sides of a right triangle and one side was missing to find that missing side. So hopefully you're starting to get the hang of this a little bit, but let's go ahead and take a look at one more example. Okay, so here's our third and final practice problem. Again, we have to find the missing length of the right triangle. And we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem to find that missing length. So the first thing that we will do is identify the hypotenuse and label it with C. In this example, we can see that the hypotenuse C is equal to 27. Next, we can label the legs, the two shorter sides of the right triangle, with A and B. And in this example, A is our unknown value, denoted with the question mark. So we're just going to leave it as A. And the length of B is 9. So we'll, we will replace B with 9 in the Pythagorean theorem. And now we are ready to solve. So in this case, we have A squared plus 9 squared is equal to 27 squared. And again, the letter A is not a number in this example. It's just the letter A because that is the missing side, the one that we have to find the value of. So now let's go ahead and solve. On the left side of the equal sign, we have A squared, which we just have to leave as A squared, plus 9 squared, which we know is equal to 81. And that sum is equal to 27 squared, which equals 729. Now to isolate a squared, we have to get rid of that plus 81. We can do that by performing inverse operations and subtracting 81 from both sides. That gets rid of the 81 on the left side. And on the right side, 729 minus 81 is equal to 648. And now we have a squared is equal to 648. So we have to get that a variable by itself, meaning we have to get rid of that exponent. So the inverse operation of squaring a number, again, is to take the square root. So we'll take the square root of both sides of the equation. The square root of a squared just equals a. And the square root of 648 is going to equal a decimal. 
So in this case, we can say 25.4558, and that decimal continues on. And you can round that number any way you like, 25.5 if you're going to the nearest tenth, or 25.46 if you're going to the nearest hundredth decimal place. Just know that it's okay to have a decimal as an answer, and it's actually very common with Pythagorean theorem questions. So that's it for our practice problems. I'm going to leave you with one last problem you can try on your own, and you can share your answer and, and try it out and see if it works out, again, using the Pythagorean theorem. So thank you again so much for stopping by and for joining me on this one, and I'll see you next time. Hi everyone, Anthony here one last time. Hope you found that lesson to be helpful. And if you want to help us out, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. We're committed to adding new video lessons every week, and now would be the time to subscribe, so I really hope that you would consider it. And also, don't miss your chance to download your free practice worksheet that's included with this video lesson. Just click the link in the description below and you can get your download. Hope to see you all soon. Bye!